So welcome back gang, this is Crazy Walder and uh, today I'm going to be focusing on the headphones that are in front of me. So in my possession I currently have these Soviet made TDS-16 Echo orthodynamic headphones. Now these are supposed to be pretty rare nowadays. Um, I managed to pick them up for I believe um, about $100 so far and they sound great but not quite as good as I had expected from a pair of um, planar magnetic headphones. Um, for those of you who don't know what the deal with that is, basically they use, instead of using a regular dynamic driver, which tends to have um, a magnet in the back and then some sort of really light diaphragm that moves back and forth with a voice coil on it, these tend to have basically a very thin diaphragm which is vibrated by a multitude of magnets so it's not usually just one magnet it's typically a couple and this makes the audio quality significantly better than what you typically get out of a regular standard dynamic headphone um, like the one you see to the right here but uh, the reason that I'm presenting the headphones on the right, which are the Audio-Technica ATH500s, I believe, uh, I might be getting the name wrong right now, is because I'll actually be taking this design and I'll be putting it in these headphones. And uh, the reason for that is these are actually semi-open headphones. You can see it's partially perforated here on the side, um, whereas these are open headphones, so it will have less of the, the echo effect. Um, hence, you know, the name echo here It's what it says. But um, I don't really like the way that these echo, so I'm going to be transplanting them into that set of headphones over there. And hopefully they'll sound pretty good. Um, I do also have a pair of um, orthodynamic TDS-15s, which are made by the same company, Amphiton. Um, they're on the way, hopefully be here before the end of the month, um, next month. So I'm really excited to get those as well and do a mod on no slash a review. But in the meantime, I figured I'd get to the review part of these headphones, um, which is, you know, what they sound like whether it's worth it to get um, orthodynamics or for example these orthodynamics since they're still um, not something that's too sought after just yet um, they may be rare so it's a little bit more difficult to get them on the market but if you're looking around any sort of audiophile marketplace generally you'll be able to pick them up for uh, not too expensive of a price so Basically, what you get in this package is um, you get these headphones. Um, they have a fairly, um, fairly decently comfortable foam pads. Um, you know, they're, these are really worn down since the headphones are quite old. It's probably a good idea to replace them if you do end up keeping them in stock form. Um, the headband obviously leaves quite a bit to be desired, but you know, it's standard uh, for that kind of time period. And they're actually pretty decent because you do have the piece on top that kind of takes some of the pressure off of your head. So that, that part of it's really nice. Um, they do keep the leads for each separate um, driver separate, which is good because you'll get much less interference that way. Um, I do believe they're using just standard copper wire. Uh, it's not oxygen-free copper, unlike in the Audio-Tech is over there so it's not a whole lot going on um, in regards to that now the impedance on these headphones is 16 ohms uh, I can't quite remember what the the range on them is but they're pretty good they're not the best um, I'll put in specs for these headphones in the description below so you guys can take a look at that yourselves they do have an aluminum voice coil, which you can't see by looking at them um, like this, but it is inside there. Um, you can be assured of that. And as far as the overall build quality and feel, um, you know, they feel cheap, which is to be expected for that time era, uh, which would be probably around, you know, like 80s or so uh, for these headphones. So you can't really expect too much out of that, but they are what they are and they sound pretty decent. I feel like the only issue is that they do have a little bit too much of uh, that kind of treble sound from the echo that comes through and they'll be remedied by uh, transplanting them into those headphones over there. Um, as far as the bass response, it's basically non-existent, so if you're getting orthodynamics, um, you're most likely not getting them for the bass. There are, of course, certain headphones in the 
in this kind of range that do offer more bass, but typically they're either a semi-closed or closed design at that point and with quite a bit of padding uh, inside of the headphone itself. Now, um, for those of you that are searching for a little bit more of that bass, there are currently um, Mayflower Electronics makes a mod for the Fostex um, T50RPs which end up basically making them either more um, bassy or more um, on the higher side. They have different versions. They have the V1s, V2s, and the V3s. Um, the V3s are their highest end and those ones are the ones that are most rounded out. Uh, the V2s, I believe, are the ones that are kind of more on the, you know, base side, and the V1s are basically just slightly better than the stock Fostex T50 RPs, but not by a whole lot. Now, um, these headphones are more comparable to the Yamaha YH1s in terms of their design, and also in terms of the, the features and the sound that they provide. Um, the YH1s, you can look those up yourself, um, a fairly good headphone, uh, they're considered by a lot of people on, um, on online forums to be kind of the third tier of orthodynamic headphones. So these are basically in that same range. Um, you do, of course, get slightly less audio quality with these than you do with the Yamahas just because of the Soviet build. But with basically a little bit of handiwork, you can actually get these to be um, quite a decent headphone. And basically for most orthodynamics out there today, if you're going for the older designs, they're going to require some kind of patching to get them up to par to even, you know, the average other old headphones that are in the same range. But with that said, you know, you are getting very high fidelity audio quality that you don't get with a dynamic driver otherwise. And I would highly recommend actually picking these up because for very little work if you're a do-it-yourself kind of person you can get these to be in the same range as the current market five hundred dollar orthodynamics um, again you know without putting too much extra money into it so if you consider the fact that this frame set me back um, seventy dollars and these set me back a hundred um, for you know hundred and seventy dollars maybe add say 10 bucks on top of that for extra padding that puts you into a $180 price range. You're getting great quality headphones for basically a third of the price or, you know, a fourth of the price of what it would cost you to get comparable, you know, orthodynamics in the same kind of quality range. So this video basically concludes my really short review of these headphones. Um, there's not much I can post in terms of audio quality, unfortunately, from these. Um, there are some graphs online floating around if uh, those of you who are into that kind of stuff to check this out. Um, me personally, I don't really look into that stuff too much. I prefer just listening to the headphones myself and seeing how they sound. And so far, these have sounded pretty impressive. Um, I would want to put them in the same range currently as my Audio-Technica um, ATH-700Hs, I believe. Um, those are the, the Air headphones, which are basically a slightly higher end model than what you see over here. But at the same time, um, the, the mids and the highs are definitely a lot more pronounced and a lot more crisp on this set than they are on any of the Audio Technicas that I own. And this is from something that was made in the 80s and uh, is quite old and decrepit to be completely honest. But so I'll be slowly making videos, um, hopefully on on the mod progress as I end up going into these headphones a little bit more so stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys in my next video.